Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome to Daily's 2A News, or if you're watching this on the main channel, welcome to The Daily Shooter. I'm going to go ahead and cross-post this video today because it's a very important topic, and I think that everybody should know what's going on. Today we're going to do an update as to the potential for a second California Freedom Week, so let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, if you follow on Instagram, Facebook, or social media in general, you may have seen some very interesting posts regarding California's potential second Freedom Week. These posts have a very important date on them, which is January 29th of 2020, and that's what we're going to be focusing on here today. Now, this date has Californians anxious, it has them excited, and rightly so, because a second Freedom Week in California would be absolutely amazing. Now, here's the thing. If you don't know what the first Freedom Week was, you're not going to know what the second Freedom Week could be, so let me give you a brief explanation of the first. The first Freedom Week was when the Firearms Policy Coalition filed for an injunction in California's magazine ban. There's a, currently a ban of magazines in California that could hold more than 10 rounds. Now, this uh, injunction was heard by Judge Roger T. Benitez, who granted the injunction. And for a limited time, Californians were able to buy, sell, transfer, acquire in any way, uh, and also manufacture magazines that... Uh, could hold more than 10 rounds. Essentially, they could hold as much ammunition as they want. And there was a huge run on all sorts of magazines in the state of California. And from what I understand, people spent millions of dollars importing magazines into the state during this short time frame. Now, what happened is the California government jumped in and they wanted to put a stay on that injunction. And that uh, stay was also granted by the same judge. Now, the judge said, we're going to give people until Friday to complete whatever it was that they were doing. And anybody that acquired something during that time period uh, was going to be a, a essentially grandfathered in until the, the end of the case, because there's currently a case winding its way through the circuit courts right now. And so for that short time period, one week, people were just able to do whatever they wanted with their magazines. And so magazines flooded into the state and it was known as Freedom Week. Now with the potential second Freedom Week, we're not talking about magazines anymore. We're talking about standard ARs. And so this is challenging California's AWB or California's current ban. And so the potential Freedom Week here is going to be even potentially bigger. Okay, so what's with January 29th and why is it so important? Well, on January 29th of 2020 at 10 a.m., Judge Roger T. Benitez, the same judge that's responsible for the first California Freedom Week, is going to be hearing arguments regarding the injunction of California's AWB. Now, if you guys are wondering why I'm using so many acronyms, that's because the algorithm for YouTube is looking for specific keywords that I'm trying to avoid. So please bear with me. But if you want more information, I will put a link directly down below to FPC's article on the topic, which they update pretty frequently. If you scroll down, you'll see all the updates on everything that's happened in this particular case. Now, this case is not just about Freedom Week. They're trying to overturn the AWB in California altogether, just like they're trying to completely overturn the magazine ban in California as well. The magazine ban is still winding its way through the Ninth Circuit, so there is more to be heard about that. But still, he's going to be hearing these arguments from both the defendants and the plaintiffs on this day. Now, there seems to be, at least on social media, a common misconception that he is going to have a ruling from the bench. And all my sources say that that is very, very highly unlikely. And more, what's more likely to happen is that Benitez is going to hear from both the defendants uh, and the plaintiffs on this. And then he's going to take that information back and he's going to take some time to think about it, go over it, uh, so that he can make the right decision. So it's probably not something where you're going to hear that uh, Freedom Week uh, has started on the 29th. That's probably not what's going to happen. Uh, he's going to take some time to think about this, and then he'll come out with his ruling, in which case I'll give you guys probably one of the best updates that I've given you in a long time, and I'll jump on it as soon as I hear anything. I promise you that. But uh, another thing you have to remember is that California is probably going to ask for a stay in this. Uh, the stay would essentially take this January 29th date off the calendar, uh, and at least for the, for the time being, and it would be rescheduled for another, another time. But more than likely, California is going to ask for a stay. However, uh, after speaking with Brandon Cones from the Firearms Policy Coalition, uh, I find it unlikely that this stay would actually be issued uh, for the state. So more than likely, this January 29th date is actually going to go through. So again, the 29th is a pretty big deal because, again, the same Freedom Week judge that we had before 
people like to call him Saint Roger G. Benitez, uh, is going to be hearing these arguments, and that is when he's going to begin, begin uh, making a decision about the injunction. Now, another thing I want you guys to keep in mind is that calling this a second Freedom Week is not necessarily an accurate representation of what we have here. Now, we called the first Freedom Week Freedom Week because it lasted for one week, and that was because the state stepped in and they were able to uh, stop the injunction and at least put a hold on it. And uh, so it lasted exactly one week. But we don't know what's going to happen in this case. Let's say, for instance, that on the 29th, he hears the arguments, he goes back, he decides uh, that he's going to go forward with the injunction and he's going to rule in favor of the plaintiffs. Now, if this injunction actually goes through, that means that people are going to be able to have whatever, uh, whatever they want. They're going to be able to take off their fin grips and put on a standard grip. They're going to be able to put on collapsible stocks and vertical foregrips and all the stuff that they want. They're going to be able to get rid of their mag locks, so forth. All that stuff is going to be able to happen uh, if this injunction goes into place because it, it essentially means that these AWs are now going to be legal in the state of California. That's what the injunction means. So that's why it's such a big deal is that all of these things that are banned in California right now based off of cosmetic features are no longer going to be banned. That's what the injunction would mean for California, and that's why it's such a big deal. However, that doesn't mean that it's only going to last a week, and it doesn't mean that it's going to last as long as a week, because if he does get the injunction, or if we do get the injunction, uh, there's a pretty high likelihood that the state's going to come in and try and stay that injunction again, which is what happened again with the first one with the magazine ban. So if the state decides to come in uh, and files for a stay on that, that means that the judge can go one of two ways. He can either grant the stay, which would again kind of stop everything in its tracks, just like it did the first time, or he can choose not to, in which case it could last until the case is over. That means that uh, AWs would be perfectly legal in California until there was an actual final ruling in this particular case. So the potentiality here is that we don't have a freedom week, we could have freedom year or freedom months or freedom years. And then if the case uh, falls in our favor, we could have freedom forever type thing, right? The implications here are very, very big and that's because there are so many other states that have very similar laws like this. Okay, so you can see how other states with similar laws are going to be looking at this uh, for precedent, right? Which means that there is a high likelihood that it could wind its way up to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court hasn't been doing a great job of taking Second Amendment cases. So if it rules in our favor in the Ninth Circuit, the Supreme Court doesn't take it, then the Ninth Circuit uh, ruling will, will stay. And if it rules in our favor, that's a great thing. Uh, if it does not rule in our favor and it goes up to the Supreme Court and they hear it, that means we have another chance to try and fight back. But meanwhile, the injunction should stay in place. So we have a, a large potential here for less than a week or more than a week. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. And so calling it Freedom Week, while it's a great way to understand what's going on because people remember the first Freedom Week, that's not necessarily exactly how this whole thing could play out. Remember, Freedom Week is just kind of a name that we all gave uh, that week that we had the injunction on the magazine ban. So uh, it's very important uh, to, to stay on top of this one and to go to the FPC's website as often as possible so that you can see any updates as they, that they've added to this article, uh, especially especially in terms of the state potentially staying the injunction uh, prior to the 29th, okay? There's specific dates where things need to be filed. Uh, the defendants have a specific date where they can, uh, you know, file their argument and stuff. So there's, there's a lot still that needs to happen. There's several dates between here and the 29th uh, before the arguments actually take place. But again, the 29th is a very big deal because again, that's when he's gonna hear the arguments. And so after that is when we're gonna have to start paying attention to whether or not he makes a decision in our favor or not. Uh, in favor of the Constitution, what we know uh, should be a, a legal thing to own. So again, this is a very important time. This is a very important month. So it's something that we need to definitely pay attention to. I'm really, really excited. I got to be honest with you. Uh, I am hopeful. I am cautiously optimistic on this one. Again, with uh, Judge Benitez, and reading his uh, opinion in, as, as it pertained to the magazine ban, uh, I feel that he is favorable to the Second Amendment, uh, to, to make another decision in favor of the Second Amendment. So if he can interpret the magazine ban in the way that he did, and he looks and applies the same kind of thing here, then obviously we could have a big win on our side in the very near future. Now what's interesting here is that 
the ban on the common type of weapon that we all know uh, in California, the ban is based mostly off of cosmetic features and not actual functionality. So if you go to the FPC's website and you scroll down towards the bottom of that specific page, you'll actually see a video by Adam Kraut where he tested what California would consider uh, featureless and then he uh, tested something that was considered standard using uh, 10 round capacity magazines and it showed that there is basically no difference between the two other than you know these cosmetic features and that the main functionality of that uh, still stays the same. So again, these are all things that could be used in the argument for the plaintiffs, showing that, look, these cosmetic features really don't change anything. You're just putting a burden on the public and causing the public to spend more money uh, on something that doesn't absolutely do anything. And it doesn't change uh, or affect the state by having them on or off. So if the state's going to try and say that they are suffering injury by having these things uh, uh, not on the right or on the rifle okay so like a vertical grip or something like that is uh, somehow going to make it more dangerous uh, it is it is proven that it functions still exactly the same and so I think we have a very good shot here at the injunction and I'm very very hopeful so stay tuned to the channel I'm going to stay on top of this as often as possible and I'm going to keep checking and get as many updates as I can be getting a lot of help from the firearms policy coalition which I really do appreciate uh, so if you can make sure again you become a member and you donate as often as possible because these people are actually fighting for our rights unlike some others out there. So I want to say thank you all very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I want to say special thank you to all of my Patreons who have helped keep this channel running because without you and YouTube's demonetization and so forth, it just wouldn't happen. So again, thank you all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and have a great day. Oh, also, if depending if you're watching this on the main channel or the B channel, make sure you subscribe to the B channel, Daily's 2A News. Thanks again. Bye.